Hello everyone, so I'm going to telling you about reflecting telescopes, that's actually the second video that I'm doing for this one, because the first one was a little bit, you know, there was a lot of background noise. So reflecting telescopes, so if you remember the last video, you know that we have um, spoke about the, the chromatic aberration, which was a problem of the refracting telescopes. So reflecting telescopes, they use mirrors instead, okay? Um, now, the equations that I told you about magnification and where to get the focal point and all these things, they work just the same, okay? So reflective telescopes, they use concave mirrors, okay? So mirrors that have more or less this shape. So they will get the, bear, uh, the uh, beam of light, which are, we are going to assume they are all parallel to each other because that object is quite distant. And they are going to focus all the rays into a point, which I'm going to call F, big F, principal focus. The focal length, F, small f, is going to be the distance between the mirror and the focal point, okay? So the place where along the principal axis all the points meet, okay? So how does it work? So let's look at this animation. So I have the parallel rays and then they are going to focus on a point, right? So I can use this science to do the first and the most simple reflecting telescope, which is a Newton telescope. What I do is, before the rays actually converge into a focus, I get a mirror that is going to send those rays through a lens where I can then see the object, okay? So that is Newton's telescope. Now, a problem that I have with this type of telescopes is that they can suffer as well from aberration. In this case, it's not chromatic aberration because I still have all the colors being focused into one point, but it is a spherical aberration because the shape of the lens is not exactly parabolic in most cases. So this means that you're going to have many focal points, look here in the picture, than just one, okay? So the image is not going to be sharp, it's going to be a little bit blur, okay? So this is a very common prob problem when you have cheap uh, reflecting telescopes because they don't have spherical, um, sorry, they don't have parabolic mirrors. Parabolic lenses and mirrors are quite expensive, so not all telescopes are going to have this. So again, this is a disadvantage for this type of telescope because not all of them are going to have a very sharp image, okay? Then there is a second type of reflect, uh, reflector or refract, uh, reflector telescope or reflecting telescope that uses mirror as well. This one I have the concave parabolic mirror and then I'm going to have a small convex mirror, okay? And this is how it's going to work. I still get the line from the outside and the light is going to be reflected from the small convex mirror, okay? But then I am going to have a hole that I'm going to have the, the rays that were being reflected by the second mirror to converge and then I'll have a lens where I can see the image. Now the problem, not the problem, sorry. One question that I was asked is if the focal point needs to be before, after, anywhere here along this line in, um, in comparison with the, pl the place where the hole is. No, the only thing that matters is that the rays pass through the hole and somehow you get a sharp image on the other hand, okay? So it doesn't matter if the focal point is going to be here, right in the hole, a little bit before or a little bit after, okay? As long as I get the same result. Now, the good thing about this telescope is that it's going to use less space. If you look at it and if you compare with the Newtonian telescope, which is this one I'm showing you now, the first one, which is the first type of reflecting telescope, is going to use more space, okay? I need to have the mirror, and then I have a plain mirror, and then I'm going to have everything to go into a lens where I have an extra tube where I have my lens. The Cassegrain telescope, the second one, I have, again, this parabolic mirror. I now have instead a convex lens and then I send the rays back to the beginning of the telescope or to the place where the mirror is. This is saving me space, which for a telescope is going to save money, okay? Because these telescopes are quite big. We are talking of mirrors that have meters in diameters, okay, in diameter. So the Cassegrain reflecting, uh, reflecting Telescope is going to have a, a longer effective focal length, 
because overall it's going to make that the focal length is bigger, okay? Because I have a convex mirror, okay? Also, the Cassegrain telescope can be shorter than the similar Newton Newtonian telescope, all right? So, and the board is not working, here we go. Advantages and disadvantages of these telescopes. Advantages, they do not have chromatic aberration, so that's good. They uh, are more compact because the length of the barrel can be shorter than the focal length of the reflector. As you could see in a second type of telescope, I can send the rays back to the first mirror. I just need to have a hole in there, okay? The Newtonian refre uh, reflector, the first one we spoke, can be very cheap to make, uh, as only there is one com uh, optical component that needs to be com uh, polished into a complex shape. So it's it can be used by many people really so even if you are not having the state-of-the-art equipment you can still use that telescope okay it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be good enough the Cassegrain reflector does not cause significant aberration of any kind and produces a very sharp image so that's great now these advantages because I have mirrors okay uh, secondary mirrors I have some light being obstructed and this happens with the two telescopes, the Newtonian one or the Cassegrain one. So this reduces the amount of light that enters the telescope in relation to the aperture size, which is the amount of light that can actually get in from the barrel, okay? And reduces the light, con uh, the image contrast, so that's not good. They are also costly to maintain because the mirrors require a recoating every couple of years to make the, to make sure that they are functionally uh, functioning sorry properly, um, and the optics need to be cleaning as well if they are open to the outside so they can get dust or any other thing. So that's a disadvantage. And finally, whatever I do, I still need the eyepiece lens. I still need a lens there where I'm going to look at the image. And this lens, as any other lenses, can have chromatic aberration. So I still cannot get rid of chromatic aberration altogether. Okay? To finalize this, so I'm just going to show the solution straight away. Some properties of reflectors versus refractors. So mirrors against lenses. Refracting, so the one that has lenses, it has a high contrast image with no obstruction, okay, so no obstruction of the image, then they are longer and a little bit bulkier than the other telescopes and they have chromatic aberration. The other one, the reflecting telescopes, they are going to have a smaller mirror, thank you, that reduces the incident light, so you are not going to get all light that you could from the telescope. You can get very sharp images and they are going to be compact and portable. All right, so that's all for the telescopes. I'll go, or for this type of telescopes, I'll go to known optical telescopes next. So see you next time, bye.